Luxables. I'm back and I'm here to talk to you about nothing else other than hair. And so in this video, I would like to talk about the scalp, what I like to refer to as the soil. And the reason why I wanted to come to you guys in this video and talk to you about the scalp is I wanted to stress the importance of the scalp and also I'm going to make another video it'll be two part the focusing on the ends but the importance of the scalp the root of your hair as well as the ends on leading to your hair goals and achieving the hair length that you desire or healthy hair so this video is focused on the scalp the scalp is a very important and essential part of the hair growth process because this is where your new growth is emerging. This is where your new hair follicles are coming out and your new hair is being created. And if you want, you can watch my video called Step Away from the Edge in which I talk about um, how the edges of our hair and new growth typically gets very scrutinized in the African American community, especially when it comes to um, you needing a touch up on your relaxer or you needing to slick these back or get them under control. There's a lot of times a lot of stigma or um, teasing or negative things associated with the new growth hair. And as I stated in that video, I talked about the fact that it's kind of ironic that a lot of times we're um, waiting and very anxious about getting new growth in, but then as soon as we get it, we're quick to apply a relaxer, which a lot of times can lead to overlap or over application of the chemical, which can cause breakage, or we are um, over processing it with heat, constantly re-straightening or re applying heat to those areas causing breakage or we're slicking our hair back very tightly with um, non-nutrient rich or non-fortifying creams or moisturizers or gels that can cause breakage. So a lot of the things that we do to maintain or get our edges and new growth under control lead to breakage when we want new growth. <laughs> but a lot of times we're conditioned to feel inconvenienced or annoyed by the new growth or just not really know how to handle or manage it. But I'm here as a firm advocate for your new growth. You love and you need to embrace and welcome that new growth and understand how it grows. And a main portion of that or a very important factor is your internal nutrition. Your um, scalp needs proper blood circulation it needs proper deposits of nutrients and vitamins in order to grow a reason for this being is your hair is a non-essential organ your hair especially in the world in which we live today is not necessary for survival or growth you know blood pumping to your other necessary organs and you know throughout your body for proper circulation is a lot more integral and central to your ability to thrive and live and breathe than your hair so your hair is oftentimes the last place where nutrients and proper blood flow are going to be taking place so it's important that to get those hair follicles full of rich nutrients and and um healthy good blood that you're getting a proper and well ba balanced holistic diet. You can watch my other video on the difference between alkaline and acidity um, rich foods and working towards a proper internal pH balance. You can also watch my videos on supplements and herbs that are linked to hair growth. But all of those things are important and play a big role in getting your scalp the food that it needs to grow the hair. And it's also important to understand that the hair is dead. So once it leaves your scalp area, it's no longer a hug. It's hard. It's no longer growing. It's no longer a living, breathing thing. Once it's exited and pushed up from your scalp like a little leaf, and I'll show you my visuals, um, it's no longer getting nutrients. It's dead. Uh, part of the reason why, just like your nails, if you cut your hair, if I cut, you know, all of this off, I wouldn't feel any pain or discomfort or any signals to my nervous system or something, I could cut it and not feel anything. Um, it's dead. It's no longer growing. And it's important to understand that as well because when you're taking a supplement or you change your diet in connection to hair growth, your hair doesn't grow from the ends out. It grows from your scalp. There's never going to be a point where your hair where you had a split end, it's suddenly going to sprout out some more hair. Some hair is going to grow off this piece. It's always coming from your scalp or your head. It's never growing from here down. So the hair is being pushed, starting from up here all the way down. And I'll talk about it more in the ends portion, because that's important to understand when you're caring for your ends. This hair has been with you. If I started my hair journey six years ago or something, this hair is six, seven, eight years old, and it's holding on by a thread you have to 
take care of and maintain something. So I think it's in Kathy House's book, Ultra Black Hair Grow 2, which I talk about in the video. She says, you know, what do you do for something that's dead? You maintain it. That's all that you can do. You try to preserve it, but it's no longer living. It's not growing like anything else. Your scalp, however, is skin. And if you cut your scalp, if you burn your scalp, if you've ever had a relaxer on for too long and you know it burns, you will burn and damage that skin. The skin can be hurt. It can be damaged. It can cause you pain. And so it's important that that scalp is getting all the nutrients it needs internally behind the scenes or um, that's not visible to us as well as on the top, which is why it's imperative that you're not over relaxing your hair, that you're not leaving your relaxer on your scalp too long, that you're not getting burns or cuts or abrasions, that the scalp is clean, that it's not getting clogged, the pores aren't clogged, because all of those things will prohibit the ability for your hair to grow at the fastest and at rate and best way possible. So I just wanted to give you guys a few visuals. I'm a visual learner. When I've taught in the past, I like to show visuals. You might think I'm cray cray, but hopefully they make sense. So one is, I had a plant in here that died before I could make this video, unfortunately. So it was going to be an even better visual, but the plant passed away. But in the pot, there's just dirt now. But I wanted you to think about if this is, if this layer is your scalp and under here is dirt and the hair um, follicles or bulbs where the hair is pushing out. A lot of people reach out to me and say, and I, I really am going to try to learn more and reach out to more um, licensed cosmetologists and also hair restoration professionals and doctors because for example, if you have a scab or you have um, a hair condition where skin has formed over the top of your scalp or over those hair follicles, it creates a layer or barrier where a lot of times the follicles beneath are not replaced. So there's, it's not, the hair is not able to puncture up out of the scalp and continue to grow, which is why a lot of times when you have a scab or something, the hair does not continue to grow in that patch or that area. So. Hopefully this is making sense. This is why it's very important that your scalp has proper health and then also your body, the internal elements, the, the um, soil is nutrient rich and good of health and good and full of nutrient healthy blood. So if this is your scalp, the hair is coming up out of it a little bit at a time. And as it continues to grow, it's growing, growing, growing like this up. But the hair at the ends that came out years ago has to be maintained and has to stay there at a rate that's almost greater than the time it takes for the new hair to come out or that same strand to keep growing in order for you to retain length. And that is why it's important that you focus on not only hair growth, but length retention, which is what I'll talk about in the ends video. So I like to think of my scalp as the soil and then deep, just like a plant, down under that soil is the roots that are not seen to the human eye. When you see a tree or something, you just see the tree in all of its glory, but you don't see the deep, deep roots that are full of nutrients and full of all types of um, vitamin-rich soil down under there. That's what your scalp is as well. So to give you two visuals that help me understand, this was in our Thanksgiving flower display, but I wanted to show you on a leaf Okay, if you look at this leaf, if you imagine the stalk inside the earth and the roots running deep, and if you imagine this as a strand of hair, you'll see that the newest hair, the hair closest to the scalp, is pretty pure and virgin-like. Like it's green, it's healthy, it's thick, it's nutrient-rich. But as the hair continues to grow and it's exposed to heat or damage or breakage or just the regular wear and tear, even if you're doing a lot of protective styles, you see that the ends of the hair, just like this leaf here, start to um, diminish. They get dry, they start to break, they're more flimsy, they're more prone to kind of falling off or falling apart. So you can see there a clear distinction between the end of this leaf and the beginning. And your hair is the exact same way. It requires a lot of moisture, a lot of um, care, and uh, special attention to these ends to keep them preserved. Because unlike a plant which can sprout off a new 
this isn't a good example this particular type of plant but if, if this was the one hair shafter stalk as you can see there's a lot of new pieces that will come off of this one hair piece or um the main branch but your hair is not like that once it's left the scalp it's dead there's nothing else that's going to really happen to repair or remake this other than protein restoration or other treatments that still won't mimic uh, virginal hair that has just sprouted so it's important that you preserve and maintain those ends in order to get full length retention and full um, hair strands to reach your goals and then the other example that I wanted to show you is similar with your nails as well so I had to wait for my nails to look really really ratty <laughs> which is most of the time to show you guys a good example so I get gel manicures and I'm going to show you on my thumbnail so pardon it looking really messy but your cuticle you can think of that also as your scalp and you can have your cuticles cut and it hurts it bleeds that's the skin area and out of that your nail is growing it's not your nail isn't growing from up here it's growing from down here in the cuticle bed and as that grows out it pushes the nail further and further out so if you think of a time when you've had fake if you've ever had um like acrylics or fake nails and for a while and you take them off and your whole nail bed is jacked up like it's scratched and falling apart if you remember you have to wait for your nail to grow all the way from that nail bed all the way back out for you to have a brand new healthy nail it's the same thing with getting a relaxer or something and waiting for your hair to transition or grow all the way out um, and I like to think of it that way with my nail because as you can see like with the old manicure um, as the cuticle as your nail starts to grow it pushes this nail polish out and that's your new growth that's your new nail growth and that's your old nail that's getting pushed out but what creates the length of long nails is this part portion of the nail being able to continue to extend and grow out and you have to maintain all of that nail in addition to the new growth to have long nails but this portion of your nail just like your hair and just like I pointed out on the leaf is typing it's it's scrubbing things it's doing dishes it's um, getting wet it's snagging on things it's messing with zippers and um, aluminum cans so it's doing a lot of things that make it prone to breakage just like your nails so for example in this nail which I'm embarrassed to show um, the nail polish has been removed and the nail is starting to break in order to have long nails you need this part to remain healthy and stay long and if my camera will focus you can even see that like the nail bed is starting to look a little bit shabby from the gel nail polish as well and you can almost think of the nail polish or your acrylic as a protective style because it is coating your nail and protecting it from damage which allows it to grow and for a lot of the nail to be preserved so much like when you wear a sew-in and you take it out and you have a lot of length retention your nails are kind of doing the same thing by having that protective layer however unfortunately sometimes like how protective styles can go wrong um your nail a lot of times or if your gel nails aren't done properly or you rip them off like i do um you can have damage to the nail bed below just like you can have damage to your hair if you don't have a proper install or proper takedown so i hope those three things are helpful they might have seemed kind of out there but i like to think of things visually or try to get just a really kind of layman's terms understanding of what it is that I'm needing my hair to do and what it is that I need to do to preserve my hair and take better care of it. So I hope that helps you understand more about the scalp and the importance of scalp in your hair growth journey. Um, comment below as always. Let me know what you think. Let me know what helps you to think of the scalp or think of caring for the area where your hair is growing. And as I said in the other video, you know, step away from the edge. Love and embrace your hair. Try not to over process or put too much heat or um, potentially damaging or, or practices that can cause breakage. So as always, love your hair, love yourself, and please watch uh, part two, which will focus on the ends. See you next time. Bye.